podcast. We'll talk oh, about let's that do sometime. it. <laughs> let's get dirty. <laughs> so, so, so sometime, sometime down the road, that would be a good topic. Yeah, I, I'd love to talk about it. So, but hey, we were gonna we were gonna talk about uh, developing confidence. Cool, let's do it. Yeah, a little bit, and um, you know, I kind of floated the idea with you about you know develop. How do you develop confidence and not? Without without becoming arrogant yeah. and, and and prideful uh, in the wrong kind of kind of ways, and I'm curious for you how you've seen that both as a martial artist, maybe developing yourself, but also as you train others. Um, you know how how do you how do you help students with that? Whether they're Gosh, maybe hard, too yeah. arrogant or they're or they're so insecure they mm. can't. You know. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's easy. Uh, personally, um, you know, for me, uh, you know, one of the reasons I, I really got into martial arts, you know, I got into it, first of all, I think because of just the love of the movement and it was just mystical and cool. Um, but I, I think I probably really stuck with it because I was bullied relentlessly. You know, you think about uh, I'm a little guy. Obviously, I'm still a little guy. And even then I was like a littler guy. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> you know. Plus my parents are poor and then add those two. So, you know, so whenever else is wearing Levi's, I'm wearing tough skins. Do you even know what tough oh, skins dude, are? Yes, okay. I do. No, <laughs> I, I, I had, uh, I, there were, there were times in, in my life where we were pretty wealthy, but there okay. were times where we were dirt poor too. Gotcha. Like I, I got kind of both ends oh, of the spectrum a little bit. Huh. Just, that's probably rare. Yeah. I can't imagine too many people live both. Probably like not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but I did, you gotcha. know, there were times where my mom would skip meals so I could eat. And then wow. there were times when, you know, and, and it has a lot to do with who she was married to at the time. Oh, but interesting. We're not married. Um, but where we had a lot. So, yeah. So, um, so anyway, so yeah, so, 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 uh, and that, and that means a lot, you know, I think when you're a kid, so, so, so I'm, we're not wealthy, uh, you know, we're poor and then, uh, I've got funny looking clothes <laughs> they, and then worse than that though, they would like to move every six months. Right. So I don't think I ever stayed in a school more than a year. Wow. So if you, th- I'm talking about ever. So I'm talking from kindergarten to high school. Imagine moving twice a year, every year. Wow. And, and so like, you're always the new kid. So I'm poor. Yeah. I look funny. I'm little. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm always the new kid. So as soon, as soon as I would develop friends and then, you know, I'd have to do it again. Yeah. And, and back then I wasn't very confident. I wasn't very, so I wasn't like the kid that was going to like, Oh, I'm going to meet new friends and come up and start high fiving kids in the playground right. and be like, Hey, I'm your new friend. I was a kid hiding in the corner, hoping not to get my butt whooped. <laughs> and so, uh, so then when I did martial arts, it's like that all changed. And I don't know if it was just the way I started carrying myself, my confidence. Uh, and then I did whoop a couple kids cause they, they, <laughs> sometimes they, you gotta do that. Yeah, they, There's yeah, a place test, for that. You well, know? they tested me, you know? And, and so, you know, kind of for that was like the word going like, Oh my, you know, you're all oh, that free yeah, zone kid. Don't mess up. Yeah. That free zone kid. I think he's like a black belt now. And, and that, you know, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so all of that kind of like into one, like develop my confidence. Yeah. And, uh, you know, similar to your path. Um, you know, it's funny because even our timelines are similar. Like when I, you know, martial arts is my haven. So, yeah. so, so, uh, being in a, a youth leader, uh, youth group leader for you is like yours. Like yeah. for me, it was being a martial arts instructor and it was right. similar timelines. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause we're not that far apart yeah. in age. So like, you know, when I was 17, 18, 19, I was teaching, you know, yeah, people yeah. martial arts. That's and awesome. so that was like my refuge was martial arts. Yeah. Whereas yours was the church. And, yeah. uh, so anyway, um, so through that path and we did a lot of leadership courses and stuff in my, um, martial arts school. Uh, and I had to teach a lot, which I was not comfortable with to begin with. <laughs> um, so it just developed my confidence yeah. and, um, yeah. So, so I guess, I guess the reason that never turned into arrogance is guys like Eric Paulson, Andre Gavel, Chris Clark, <laughs> you know, and, I, and I'm a world champion. So, so I'm all right. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. not a bad, you know, martial artist. Right. Uh, but when you just realize there's levels to there's, this. There's, yeah, there's, there's another. <laughs> there's always somebody better, there's right? always someone better. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's really important to remember. You know, I, I was, I had a lot of insecurities growing up too. In, in a lot of ways. And, um, and I do know what tough skins are. I wore tough skins and it's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we went down to the, I'm trying to remember the name of that store. There was like, you know, one of these like, uh, mount mall store, you know, uh, strip mall stores. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like a, it was like everything was super cheap. You know, it was probably made in China and you know, the whole thing. And it was like 10 bucks for a pair of jeans or something instead of 50 or whatever yep. the case might be. And, um, you know, I don't know. I don't, my, my dream was to have a pair of union Bay, jeans. Did you, did you, I don't you, remember you, you don't remember me. No, I don't remember. That was like my dream. That was everybody was wearing at my school. And I was like, gotcha. man, I'm going to save up my 50 bucks and get me a pair of union. Yeah. Babe. I did eventually save did. up that much. Oh yeah, man, but. I'm going to have to look those up. <laughs> this is dumb. I'm going to, I'm going to Google them. Yeah. But I was insecure too. Same reasons. Uh, a lot of them, even though I played sports and 
um, you know, I, I played football and, and, and ran track one year and lifted weights and, and I did have, uh, like, you know, some of my friends were, were more popular and things like that and on, on, on sports teams, but I would still get picked on by them. Mm. So, so the same guys I said, Hey, that's my friend would, you know, turn around and kind of, kind of bully me a little bit, oh, almost like an yeah. initiation huh. right or something. Huh. And, um, and, and one of them was Sean Shirk, which is why I mentioned him earlier. Cause oh, I went to yeah. high school with him and <laughs> uh, he was yeah. like, man, he picked on one of my students. Yeah, bro. no, he didn't pick on me, but, uh, I didn't know him that well. He was a year younger than me, but, um, but, but, but anyways, so we, uh, you know, but, but there were guys and they just kind of pushed me around a little bit and a lot of them were wrestlers and knew how to handle themselves, you know, as far as how the body movements and leverage and how strength worked and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, and I just didn't have that. And so, so there were times where, where I'd get kind of pushed around a little bit, even mm-hmm. though they, you know, it wasn't super mean spirited, gotcha. um, but it was enough to really bother me. Hmm. And then my mm-hmm. home life was a mess. Like I mentioned. Yeah. So you have no refuge. Yeah. So yeah. I had no refuge. And so I, I just was really insecure and, you know, watched, watched my mom, you know, uh, be abused and things like that. And, uh, and so that's really scary. You know, that we had, we literally had go bags. Wow. Uh, yeah, we had go bags. And so my mom would go, all right, we got to go, you know, cause, cause my stepdad would come home and he's drunk or whatever, the, whatever the case might be. She was yes. fearful. And so she's like, I'm taking my son and getting out of here. Crazy. And so we'd go stay in hotels and, um, wasn't like every week, but it was often enough. And, uh, and so, so I had a lot of insecurities and, and in some ways that's, that's part of why I, I found martial arts, but it's also where my, my, my faith comes from too, is, is that I kind of had to get to a point go, okay, God's my protector. Mm-hmm. Um, because I knew I couldn't protect myself and, and those kinds of things. And, and it's interesting how, how a lot of those things can be so difficult. Cause then you look, everything looks huge when you have insecurities, everything looks like you can't overcome yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's. It's so huge. And I know we were texting a little bit earlier and just talking about, you know, one of the students at the gym uh, who was in one of the classes I helped with um, came in and was really scared uh, because everything was so overwhelming and just felt like felt like they couldn't do it. They can. It's, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And. And I have some thoughts about like, how do you, how do you overcome that? But what do you tell, what do you tell students? Like they're, they're, they're scared. It's too much. I mean, how, how do you address that as far as, cause I'm sure you've had lots of students that have probably struggled Thousands, with that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, it's tough with, uh, people, you know, because I think a lot of it comes from judging, you know, like maybe they think someone's judge you know and and it kind of goes back to me as a child getting bullied yeah and 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 if i would have just flipped the script in my mind right i wish i had parents that were capable enough to understand that and flip it in my mind and 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 just and realize it's all mindset because i bet you i could have rocked in there with those tough skins if i was super confident and just came in i'll bet you that i would have been everyone's friend right you know what i'm saying because it's just crazy you know it's like uh you see people that even people that are unattractive or overweight or, or whatever, but their confidence is like off the charts. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, you know what I mean? You see like this big fat dude with like the hottest girl in the entire like state. Like <laughs> how did that happen? And then you talk to these for five minutes. And you're like, Oh, I get it. Yeah. Cause exactly. this guy's amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? He's funny. He's charming. He makes you feel good. All these things. Right? Smart or whatever. So, yeah. You know, exactly. And, and so, um, I think the same thing, me, you know, even though maybe I look funny, like, if I would have had that over brimming confidence, had that ability, uh, you know, and so same thing. I think when a new student comes in, it's just like, you know, like you said, it's like that, that pressure of like, oh my gosh, well, this person's looking at me and, and, and I'll bet you I look funny to this person. Yeah. And I bet you that person's judging me. Uh, and maybe you don't have the words for it, but that's subliminally somewhere going on back there. Um, so if you can change that mindset, I think, and, and just, you know, talk to them and say, Hey, no one cares. Yeah. You know, like you're here for you. This is your journey. Compare if, yourself to you yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and if we can just take it step by step, like, are you progressing, right? Are you getting stronger or, or, or thinner or in, in better shape? Or are you, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it is. Uh, I think that's what matters, you know, and if you can change that frame in someone's mind that's the trick yeah you know but the trick is to be able to recognize that they are feeling that way and get them fast yeah because otherwise it'll be too late then they're gone they're gone man and And it's it's sad because you could really help someone you could change their lives you know but they don't uh give themselves the chance so yeah and i and i as i was thinking about it 
I think a lot of times people, you know, success breeds success and failure breeds failure. And, and what I mean by that is not so much, can I, can I do this move or can I, you know, and that kind of stuff. But, but really I think success is oftentimes just not quitting and just going, I'm just going to, I was overwhelmed today. I couldn't figure this out. Everybody else seemed to get it, but I didn't. Mm. But if they will stick through and figure that one thing out, then it's like, Oh, I figured that out. It took me a little longer maybe, or whatever. I struggled with it, but I, I, I figured it out. And then they're like, okay, I can figure out the next thing. Mm-hmm. And they figure out that. And I figure out the next thing. And it, it kind of builds that confidence. And all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're like, yeah, I can do it. They, they have success. And, and I think about um, the tough mindedness of that. I think that's required. And you gave me a book, uh, the Goggins book, David yes. Goggins. And which can't I, hurt me. You can't, can't hurt me. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and, and I've been reading that. I'm not done with it yet, but I've been reading that. And, and it's, it's amazing because he, he has a really crazy story and, and some insecurities and stuff like that. But it was kind of the same thing. Like, you know, he just didn't quit. Yeah. And, and sometimes that's, that's it. Just don't quit. And all of a sudden you, you accomplish that one thing. And it seems like, you know, then, then everything like seems smaller. You know, the, the barriers. And, and I can overcome that. You know, it's um, for years I was, I was, I was overweight. I wasn't always 250 pounds, but I was, I was heavy. And then I went to, um, went, went, went to seminary and got my master's degree. And during that time I got heavier and, and got up that 250. And, and I remember thinking, man, I can't ever lose weight. There's no way I can't do it. Cause I would go work out like, yeah, you know, three, four days a week and I'd gain weight. You yeah. lost like 80 pounds with us, right? 80 pounds. Yeah. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like a whole person almost at least, <laughs> at least a half a person. <laughs> right. Yeah. At least a half a person. Yeah. 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 A, a child anyways. Right. I can, yeah. that's, yeah. that's weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, you know, but you, you stick with it and it's interesting because all of a sudden I lost 10 pounds and it's like, Oh, I can lose weight. That, mm-hmm. that, that can happen. And you know, I, I made a couple of tweaks in my diet and then, you know, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm losing 10 pounds and then all of a sudden I lost 15 and then I lost 20 and then I lost, Oh wait, Hey, hey I can do this. I can actually lose weight. And it, I thought, I, I literally thought there's, there's something with my body chemistry that I can't lose weight. That that was what I believed prior to actually losing wow, weight. Wow. That's crazy. Isn't it? Y- isn't it weird belief? Yeah. Yeah. Just, I didn't know that's funny. I, I didn't know that you had that thought. That's crazy. Yeah. Though, right? Yeah. I would literally tell people that I would I'd be like, wow. man, I just can't lose weight, man. I go work out all the time and it just doesn't matter. You know, I can't lose weight because I would literally go to the gym and I would do like 45 minutes to an hour of cardio. Huh. And then I would, and then I'd go do some light lifting. I wasn't doing heavy lifting, but just kind of huh. higher rep stuff. Cause I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to put on weight and, and, and I wouldn't, I'd, I'd gain weight at times. Crazy. Do you think I was mainly diet or just how you were working out or what you were, you know, like what, why, why would you say that? What was the mechanism that was causing you to gain weight or not lose weight? Yeah, I think it was a couple of things. One was diet for sure. Mm-hmm. That was a piece of it. And I, I used to drink like, uh, you know, six to eight cans of Mountain Dew every single day. Yeah. And it was just ate whatever I wanted. Um, and then I'd tell myself I was trying to eat healthier because I'd only drink four cans of Mountain Dew. And, you know, like, gotcha. like that kind of stuff. And then, uh, and then I think the other piece of it was the way I was working out. You know, I, I had... Um, my knees hurt a lot at the time I was heavier. And so my knees hurt and stuff. And I quit doing like, you know, cause I used to do 14ers and stuff like that. And I quit doing them cause it just hurt. And then, so, so I'd always be on these ellipticals and, you know, I mean, if you have to be on elliptical, that's fine, but it's not like, it's not the same as running. Not the same. It's just a different world. And so I think really for me doing, you know, coming into the martial arts program, and doing the simple stuff, the shrimps down the mat and being exhausted at the end of one time down the mat, just going, Oh my gosh. Cause I was an athlete, you know? So it was weird for me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and I, but I, but just the stuff, cause it wasn't high impact a lot of it. And, and I was able to do a lot of not high impact, but it still required a lot of, a lot of exercise, you know, a lot of uh, resistance and things like that. And so I think, I think the combination of how it's working out along with diet really, really made. And then, and then coach K really helped me fine tune that after I'd already lost some weight, but, but really helped me fine tune it. And then I lost a whole bunch more after that. That's awesome, so man. yeah, it was really cool. And so I think that gave, you know, that gave me confidence. You know, it's always been these little successes. So my mom didn't go to college. My dad didn't go to college. Um, my grandpa, my, my grandpa did college. My uncle did college, but, but, but for me going to college, was, was a big step. Not a lot of people in my family done it. And mm-hmm. I don't think my grandpa ever graduated. My uncle eventually did, 
but he went back later in life. Um, and so even that, and it took me, it took me longer than a lot of people, but then that one success was like, Oh yeah, I can do that. Cause I entered college on academic probation. Then I entered uh, seminary on academic probation nice. and, and I wasn't sure about seminary either. Those insecurities. Right. And I took one class and I went, okay, I'm gonna take one class. Just see how it goes. And I got a B. I was like, all right, I can handle the workload. So that one success. Hmm. All of a sudden, okay, I'm going to go back. And then I had, you know, I could have graduated with honors. I didn't, I didn't, you had to apply and stuff like that. I didn't do that, but I had a high enough GPA to graduate with honors and all that kind of stuff. And I think those simple successes yeah. really helped me to kind of go, okay, I can do this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think like you said that that's, that's the key is because, you know, if you try to eat the, the whole thing in one bite, man, you're just, it's going to just feel overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. But we have those guys, we know them, right? They were, where th- th- that confidence turns into cockiness and yeah, uh, it's, it's tough, right? Because you want someone to be confident and, and, and have that pride about themselves. Uh, but then it can flip into, you know, um, arrogance. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think the best example, that's like a Mayweather. I mean, that guy, <laughs> uh, you talk about just like, uh, the cockiest, most arrogant, you know, person in the world. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he, he is, he is probably the best, you know, if, if he's yeah. not the best boxer ever, I, I would say that he's arguably, you know, top five ever to, you know, right. Walk the earth. Um, definitely for sure. You know, currently the best Yeah, and, uh, you know, but he's just so like over the top, uh, yeah. arrogant and cocky and stuff like that. And, um, you know, especially in martial arts, uh, it's a little bit different in sports, but especially in martial arts, that's kind of a. Um, like a big no, no, so to speak. Right. Like, you know, that, that kind of goes against the martial way. It goes against being a black belt. It goes, you know, against a lot of the tenants that we have in martial arts to be respectful and be humble. And, uh, so it can, it can kind of become a problem. It's, it's a fine line, man. And the funny thing is I've seen it like, like the story you're talking about where the unconfident kind of awkward, um, uh, not the best student, like then becomes good and then yes. they get cocky and then it's like oh god what, <laughs> what just happened man? Right. you were on such a good path right you know it's like man i you know we, we fed him all this stuff or her all this stuff where it's like yes confidence growing oh good awesome uh-oh we're starting to tip over to the other side <laughs> arrogant cocky you know what i mean and it's like oh man you know we just went too far the other way which is it's kind of sad yeah for me it's kind of sad yeah well and, and you know i think about you you know as far as me i'm i'm not yeah, I'm, I'm pretty early in my martial arts journey and, you know, like I'm okay, but I think about you and you walk around, you, you know, you're, you're, you're black belt. You've been doing martial arts your life. You've got multiple, uh, black belts and or black belt level rankings and, and all this stuff. And I, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, when you walk around the gym, you, you're probably the best guy in the gym, you know, almost all the time, if not all, all the time, you know, maybe once in a while when somebody comes through like uh, Andre Gaval comes mm-hmm. in or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, how do you manage that as far as I mean, cause, cause I've, my experience with you is you're, you're a humble guy oh, thank you. Appreciate and stuff it. like that. And so, um, so how do you manage that as far as your own yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, for me, it, it's tough too, because, you know, going back to Mayweather or, you know, if you want to use another example, like Conor McGregor, like there has to be a point, especially when I was competing more. I mean, I quit competing in like 2011, uh, but back then, I don't think I was different as a person. But leading up to that match or that fight or whatever I was doing, like you kind of you got to really believe you're the best, or at least yeah. believe you can beat that other person, and you got to kind of constantly feed yourself that mantra. Uh, you know, so so it's interesting because it's this fine line between like okay, telling yourself every day you're the best, you're unbeatable, but then like not being cocky. Right. right? And, um, I think the biggest thing that I see and I think like, uh, professor Andre, you know, that I've learned from him is I've never heard him say he's the best. I've never heard him puff his chest up and like, you know, I mean like, like Mayweather will literally run around the gym. I'm the best. I'm undefeatable. You can't beat me. I'm too fast. You know what I mean? Like Muhammad yeah. Ali style, right? Yeah. Like he got back from Muhammad Ali <laughs> and, uh, and I've never seen Andre do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But what I have seen him do is I work harder than anyone. Yeah. I'm more dedicated than anyone. I put in more rounds than anyone. You know what I mean? And so I think he, the reason that he was able, and, and I feel like uh, I hope myself as well, is like, not I'm the best, but I work the hardest. Yeah. And, and so I think that's what flips from like a confident dealio. Like I'm well prepared. I train hard. I, you know, I know my stuff. Uh, and I'm working harder than anyone. That's like a confidence instilling versus like I'm better than, you know, 
uh, uh, better than anyone or, you know, superior to someone. That's more right. like an arrogance level. Right. And, and so that's the way that I feel. Um, for me, you know, I've always been able to stay humble and then just knowing like, man, there's always someone, there's always someone, right. There. You know, I mean, they're just, they're just is, it, it, even if it's on any given day, you know, all those guys have lost. Yeah. Even if you beat somebody nine out of 10 times, there's still that 10th there's time. No, yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. 100%. yeah. And, I, and I think that's, that's huge. And, and I know that, you know, for me, I go to the gym and I, I get tapped all the time and, you know, it's, it's so, so as far as that's concerned, I don't have a hard time staying humble, but, but I do think, you know, I, I had a, I had a pastor one time I was, a, I was an associate level position. I think for me, you know, he, 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 he cautioned me a lot at times. He's like, you know, cause I would preach when he didn't, and stuff like that. You know, he was on vacation or just needed whatever, whatever thing was and say, hey, John, you're going to preach and I go preach and, and you know, you're the change up guy, right? So you, you get all, you get all the accolades. Like, oh, that was awesome mm. because they're so used to this other thing. And then you get up and preach gotcha. and then people are like, Oh, that's so great. Yeah. We, we love how you preach. You're and, like the cool uncle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> you don't true. get the good and the bad. You just get to come in and yeah, be yeah. the cool uncle. Yeah. And it, and it was, and, and it was, um, you know, builds your ego and yeah. it's really easy to go, Oh yeah. And you start to think, you know, oh, maybe I'm better than, you know, the mm. pastor or whatever. And people would even say that stuff. Like they would, mm. they would say, wow, I really like you better than pastor, whoever, you know, than, mm. and, or, or in front of the other pastor, you know, they'd say, Oh yeah. To him, they'd say, well, you better watch your, watch oh, yourself. Be like, yeah. you know, or job and they're joking, but that builds you up. You know, yeah. you hear those comments and, um, and, and I got cautioned one time and I, and I remembered it and, and, and he says, don't believe your own press, that's awesome. you know? And I, I think that's really good advice that, that to help keep you humble is look, there's always somebody just like, just like at times, especially if you get up and do public speaking and stuff, there's always somebody that's going to criticize you. There's always somebody that's going to, going to tell you these really great, wonderful, positive things. And they, sometimes they even have visions of you because of your position. You know, um, I'm the one up on stage speaking. And so for them, it's kind of, this is going to sound weird, but you know, they, they kind of envision you in a certain way, but they don't really know you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they don't know your downfalls, your faults, your, you know, your screw ups. They don't know that stuff. All they see is the person on stage, rock star. the rock star. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so sometimes they'll say things and, and, and you just kind of got to go, they don't know, you know, there's enough bad about me too, that, you know, to keep me humble. And I, so your critics sometimes remind you that, but, but anyways, yeah. Confidence is huge though, because it can breed success, but it, but you know it can also arrogance. Yeah, absolutely. Can can harm success. You know, yeah. you, you become unteachable. Line. Yeah, that, and that's that's a tough. I mean, from my perspective, at least, is uh, you know when I'm trying to teach someone and uh, they're unteachable like that, it's just tough because people plateau so hard, yeah. right? And, and so they'll they'll have this this really tight arc, fast arc where they they get good quickly, yeah. but then they just plateau forever. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, your cups, you know, right. Like that old adage, right. Your cup's full. Yeah. Right? You know? And so if it's full, I mean, you're right. You can't add anything more to it. So right. having an empty cup and being teachable, uh, and realizing there's so much more to learn, you know, it's, it's, it's so important, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks, man. This has been fun. Yeah, it's awesome. We're going to wrap this thing up. I think we're going to wrap it up. Cool. And uh, yeah, and, and look forward for more. We'll, yeah, man, we'll it's going to be, it's be fun. I know this one was kind of a, a gentle subject, but I'm sure we're going to get into some less gentle subjects. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, with like toxic masculinity. <laughs> That'd be and, fun. We'll and, definitely and, do that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Definitely and I know we're going to have some special guests coming up soon too, so. Yeah, hopefully we're working on, we're working on one specifically. And uh, maybe, I, you know, I've got two in mind. I was thinking, you, okay. yeah, I was thinking uh, Ben, of okay. course, Ben Pexton, and I was also thinking Zach Lesman. Oh, that would be a great story. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you heard about Zach, uh, but he just got, uh, you know, cleared. He's in remission. He's in remission. So that's pretty wild. He's got a cool story. They both have on different levels. Yeah. Like super cool. I think super cool stories. Yes. Um, they're both inspirational people. Yeah. So, very uh, awesome. Uh, so I get to roll with Zach all the time. He's, he's, he's amazing. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. So look forward to some re really great stuff. So until next time. Right on brother. All right. All right. Peace.